Hello, and welcome to another segment of Christ and His Church, going through this year the books of Luke and Acts, and just seeing how, uh, what those chapters have to say to us, and how we can apply them as disciples of Christ. And so, this week we are in Acts chapter 15, and this section is all about disunity and tension within the early church. And so, Tommy and Steve talked the past two weeks about this missionary journey <clears throat> that Paul and and his company has been on. And they come back, and like Tommy spoke about last week, about the report that they gave and all the good that has happened. And so, when we get to chapter 15, we have a little bit of that, but as soon as that starts to happen, we also have some tension uh, that it's brought up, uh, and it's cloaked in this issue of circumcision. But the real issue is the Jews are are having trouble with these Gentile believers. Um, the world that Paul and his company go to on these missionary journeys is largely Gentile, and so a lot of these converts are from Gentile and pagan cultures. And of course, the Jews don't don't like that, right? There's always been that tension between Jews and Gentiles uh, in the New Testament world, and so this really comes up in Acts chapter 15. And so it starts off. It says, "But some men <clears throat> came down from Judea and were preaching to the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved." So it's saying, "All right." There's a lot of these converts, but no one's really saved until they're circumcised. And that's what they're preaching. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go to Jerusalem to the apostles and to the elders about the question. So they go uh, to some of the leading figures uh, to ask them, okay, what, what are we going to do about this? Uh, so they're going on their way and they continue to describe what they've been doing. Uh, again, going off Tommy last week, they, they continue to say, here's what God has been doing through through us for all these Gentiles. And it brought great joy to, to the people who they talked to. But there's still this tension laying in the background. And so they came to Jerusalem. They're welcomed by the church. Uh, but again, some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. And so this is, again, laying up the core of the issue. Like these, they bring up some of these issues, but the core is that we're Jews and they're Gentiles. They need to either be pushed away or they need to become Jews, one of the two, right? Um, but Paul's going to get up, or sorry, Peter gets up and delivers this speech uh, and he says, um, brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among the word, among you, by the mouth of God, uh, that by the mouth of God the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did us. And in verse 10, now therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? It's like you're you're placing all these requirements and and burdens on the Gentiles, but you have to remember, our fathers couldn't even keep the law, right? We can't even keep the law. Um, so why why are you trying to do that to them? And then verse eleven, but we believe that we will be saved through grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, just as they will. And so there's the the basic point of his speech, right? He gets up and he's like, okay, you're trying to place all these laws and requirements on the people that no one has ever been able to accomplish. But he, he says, look, if anybody is going to say, be saved, whether it be the Gentiles, whether it be our fathers, whether it be us, uh, whether it be you, it's through the grace of Jesus, right? That's what's going to save, uh, not holding to the law perfectly, because no one can do that, right? And so if anyone is going to be saved, it's through grace. And so the assembly fell silent. And they listened to Barnabas and Paul as they related the signs and wonders that God had done among them through the Gentiles. Again, 
uh, Paul and Barnabas are saying, look what is being done uh, in this Gentile world. And so they finish speaking, and then James gets up and again uh, addresses, addresses this question. And he quotes from uh, Amos, but uh, talks about the prophets. And he said, look, this is what the prophets have, have been getting at all along. Like they, <clears throat> they even uh, prophesied that it's going to be the Gentiles who are going to be uh, part of, of this new <clears throat> people of God. Uh, this, this was prophesied long ago. Uh, so it shouldn't be that big of a surprise, right? And so they think and they're, okay, what, what, are, what do we need to do? Um, therefore, the judgment, my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God. Uh, so we shouldn't make it harder on them. But instead, mm -hmm. we should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from what has been strangled, and from blood. And so he points out four huge things in pagan a Gentile culture that that they would have been around every single day, right? The, these are um, four heavy uh, parts of, of their pagan culture. And so he's, he's saying, like, we shouldn't trouble anymore, but instead we should write to encourage them. So they've been given this new law of Christ. They've been shown the way of Christ. Uh, instead of, of, like, troubling them even more, we should say, hey, let's encourage them to say, look, there's, there's these things in your world that you're going to see every single day, and they're going to be big pulls for you, but uh, don't give in, right? Stay strong and continue in the faith. Um, and so that, that's, that's the message that, that James wants to send, uh, and is the message that they end up sending in verse 20, uh, 22 through 29 in the letter that they send. It's okay. Um, we just want to write and encourage you to stay away from these four things. Um, so a reminder of one, okay, the world around us uh, is not a emblem of what we should be doing, right? Uh, there are things in our culture, there are things in every culture that are not re do not resemble the way of God. And so what are what are some of those elements in our culture that that we should stay away from if if James and the council were writing a letter to us uh, in our day, what are the four things that they would say, hey, you really need to watch out for these things in your world because every single day when you walk out your door, you're going to be pulled to these things. Um, but, but you have to stay strong um, and, and resist those pulls. But also, uh, if you look through the letter, uh, one of the big driving points of the letter is maintaining unity. Uh, that seems to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, part of the letter. Is they they say, all right, in all this, we just we want to maintain unity, um, both theologically uh, in what they believe, but also relationally, right? Um, and just how we relate and and speak to people, unity is a huge deal to them. Uh, and so, how big of a deal is that to us? What am I doing um, to build unity within our body here at Red Bank, whether it be theologically or, um, and probably most importantly, uh, relationally? I would say we, uh, theologically, we all stand on um, similar grounds, but man, relationally, a lot of times uh, we do not stick to the driving force of how can I maintain unity? Um, it's just kind of human nature to right, just kind of uh, either talk behind people's backs or uh, do something to tear down unity. Uh, but what if I approached every day, every um, moment with our church body to say, okay, what can I do right now? What can I do today? What can I do um, this Wednesday night? It's, it's a Wednesday morning, so we'll be gathering together Wednesday night. What can I do to help strengthen the unity uh, in this church, whether that be encouraging, reaching out to somebody, um, texting them, calling them, saying I'm praying for them, uh, anybody who's uh, sick maybe, uh, writing or, or reaching out to them, uh, or just speaking to somebody uh, across the the auditorium who you normally don't speak to and saying, like, hey, how, how's your week going? Uh, what can I do to build 
unity uh, in relationships within our church. Um, but uh, as verse 36 through 41 um, point out, uh, there's going to be disagreements, right? There are going to be things that that uh, that we butt heads on, and uh, we have uh, Paul and Barnabas here. Uh, they start to uh, butt heads with each other, um, and so there's a a disagreement between them, and they end up separating them, uh, separating from each other. We don't have a ton of details about what happens, but uh, there's going to be disagreement, right? Um, but uh, one thing that that's pointed out, two things that are pointed out in this section is one, the work of God, uh, the work of discipleship does not stop. Uh, even in their disagreements, they say, okay, we have a job that we need to do. So they take, uh, they take people with them and they say, hey, we're here to spread the gospel. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so the work of God continues. But, uh, and going back to the letter, um, there's a really cool section uh, It says in verse 30, so when they were sent off, they went down to Antioch, and having gathered the congregation there, they, they delivered the letter that the council writ, had written. And when they had read it, they rejoiced because of, it, because of its encouragement. Um, in all this tension and debate, uh, they end up handling all that in a way that encourages uh, the people around them. So when disagreements arise, when um, things happen, how can I handle that in a way that encourages the people around me uh, instead of tearing down, which is so easy to do, right? But how can how can I be an encourager uh, and a relationship builder within the church? Um, hopefully that's given you some stuff to chew on. Hopefully you can uh, take some of that and say, okay, how can I help build and encourage uh, and um, strengthen the unity here at Red Bank? Oh, I hope you have a great rest of the day and uh, we'll see you next week.